you say one big mistake happened the moment schools were closed. What was that? Yeah. So, you know, the decision to close schools was made quickly um, and summarily uh, across the country. And when that decision was made, um, you know, in February uh, around there, I, I felt like it was a reasonable decision to make because the truth is that schools are normally a prime vector for spreading viruses. You all know that. You have your kids in school, they, they get sick. And if someone's sick, all the kids get sick. And we also didn't, so there was reason to believe that kids would get it in schools. And we had no way of knowing how sick kids were getting yet. So arguably, the decision to close schools was about keeping kids safe too, because we thought they could get very sick from this virus. But what I said at the time was, um, it's okay to close schools, but we need to make reopening schools our number one priority. Uh, that schools should be the last thing to close and the first thing to open. And that's where I think things, from my perspective, um, got off the rails. But the minute they closed the schools, they should have been planning to how they're going to get them reopened. Safely. Absolutely. And that didn't happen. That did not happen. And even when we got enough information to know that transmission in schools wasn't <laughs> as bad as we thought, that there were ways to make schools safe, um, even when vaccines came along for teachers to get vaccinated, many, many school districts didn't open. And, and I think the, the unfortunate reality is that um, children historically have not been um, a priority. Children don't vote. They don't make political contributions. People were talking about politics and money. And, and, and as a result, we were seeing many um, communities having bars and restaurants and tattoo parlors open and schools closed. And for me, that was shameful. Well, according to the Journal of American Medical Association uh, pediatric study, school closures could be significantly effective for infection control only when outbreaks are due to viruses of low transmissibility and, a, and attack rates are higher in children than adults. But that just did not seem valid for coronaviruses. Well, the, the odd thing about this virus is that um, even though its transmissibility was high, um, children were not significantly affected. That's not to say that no children were significantly affected, but the mortality rate in children was very, 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 very low, unlike it was in older adults or people with chronic disease. We didn't know that originally, but as we got to know that, it really should have changed the calculus for us. Um, and it really, in the public debate, the, it was framed as keeping schools open versus uh, killing people. And that's kind of a no-brainer, right? I mean, for all of us, if we said, well, I mean, if we, if we open schools, people will die. We all said we should keep schools closed. What we didn't think about at the time, and we're seeing it now, many people, I should say, I think some of us did think about it, was that actually closing schools kills people too. <laughs> it doesn't kill them today, um, mm -hmm. but it kills them over time. Um, they go to what economists call an invisible graveyard. So the consequences of disrupted schooling today have long-term consequences for children's lives, their lifespans, I should say. So we did a study that was published, some colleagues and I, last November. And what it showed was that actually um, the, the, the closure of schools cost more life years than keeping them open would have. And we're going to talk about exactly what that finding was okay. because I think people are going to be shocked to hear that in terms of, uh, of years of life lost, money lost, right. and the future of this country that was impacted because of these schools being closed. You are going to be shocked at the truth of what the science says. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.